Those that are starving will eat from your plate. Streets know the bank with your money is safe. Ball in the wind and y'all playing the play. That's where they stupid, they think it's a game. Stand and believe on your tin every day. Speak to existence and that is the fate. Came from the bottom and didn't complain. Doing the dash, now it's off to the race. We tell the time and that's not what protect. Know by the commas that run through the check. Carry the money with bulletproof vests. Taking no chances, we gotta protect. Land and foundation we built from the sweat. City of champs, prepare to get swept. Scoring a win with a capital W. 23rd letter, we burn from the West. What's going on with it, y'all? Welcome to another show of Real Inglewood Moments. Y'all know how we do. We bring y'all the real and the real uncut, man, from Inglewood, man. Today, I got a guy, man, from Inglewood, California, man, named Larry Lavelle. He out here doing the most, man, you know what I'm saying, in his studio and making things happen, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get his story on how he grew up in Inglewood, how it was for him in his life and things that was going on and how he got to where he at right now today. You know what I'm saying? So introduce yourself, brother. What's going on, world, again? My name is Larry Lavelle, celebrity music producer straight out of Inglewood, California. I'm sitting here with my guy from Inglewood, Real Inglewood Moments, and, you know, we about to get into the real. Let you let you guys know how we did it in the City of Champions, where we came from, where I came from, and what we're going to continue doing, and what we have on this road here, this beautiful journey from the City of Champions, you heard? So make sure you guys go check out this podcast, Real Inglewood Moments, on every single platform possible. Follow Real Inglewood Moments on Instagram. Shout out to my sponsor, Parlay P, and shout out to Studio 1920 for sponsoring the podcast as well. Thank you, guys. All right, all right, Larry. So let's get into it, man. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we know you're from Inglewood, so, you know, yes, give sir. us a little history on your Inglewood. Did you grow up in Inglewood? Was you born in Inglewood? You know, let us know what, what's happening. Did you, you know how you, how you become an Inglewood, Inglewood resident? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh... If we want to keep it real technical, I was born in Beverly Hills at Cedar Sinai Hospital uh, on Thanksgiving morning at 7:58. Shout out to uh, Jacqueline and Shiran. Uh, we appreciate you guys for you know helping me get here and bringing me here and things of that nature. But um, as soon as I came home that Friday, I came straight home to Victor Avenue, Venice, in Inglewood, um, and that's where I spent literally the first 12 years of my life after you know coming out the womb. Um, stayed on 855 Victor Avenue, legendary spot. Everybody knows where that's at. Um, I went to Highland Elementary in Inglewood for my uh, elementary years. I went to A.F. Williams Christian Academy at True Vine Baptist Church right there on Centinella. I went to Inglewood Christian School on, uh, on La Brea and Hillcrest. So I went to Parent. You know, middle school, I went to City Honors High School. My my history is really Inglewood. So um, you can ask anybody about me. Uh, they know where I came from. They they know where I used to be at. Double A Market, Louisiana Fried Chicken, all of that stuff, man. Uh, Ladera Park, you know, Sentinella Park, Ladera Heights, whatever you guys want to call it. 66th and Corny. Shout out to everybody over there, you know. That's right, that's right. So, uh... I mean, you know, how long, how long have you been into music? Like, you know what I'm saying? Since you were a kid, I'm pretty sure you liked music. But mm -hmm. when did you know that you really was going to be doing music? Um, I knew I really was going to be doing music, man, when I made the conscious decision in the 10th grade to skip my entire first semester of school, except Friday, um, in order to go home and learn this specific program called FL Studio. At the time, we were on version 7. Um, I had just downloaded it before we didn't have any internet in our house for six months. So, um, and I was just very intrigued by the program. I don't encourage kids to skip school. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just giving you guys my real story and just giving you the real journey on how I got to where I got to. Uh, music was definitely an outlet for me, but when I knew I made that conscious decision to do that, to choose that over my education, I knew that music was destined for me because at that time, that was the biggest risk that I took in my life. So that's how I knew that music was, you know, in my soul. That's how I knew that it was written in my in my life. And, you know, that's how I knew that I was never going to quit this, especially if I was willing to get a butt whooping for this. That's right. That's so. right, man. So what about um, 
who inspired you to do music? I mean, you know what I'm saying? What was some of the artists that you liked back in the days when you were a kid that you hear? Like me, myself, I'm an older guy, so I grew up on like Marvin Gaye or Stevie right. Wonder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what, 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 who inspired you to do music or, you know, like music? You know what? You guys are going to laugh at this. I wasn't even inspired by anybody in our hometown. I was actually inspired by Little Bow Wow at the time because we were around the same age. And uh, there was just no outlets in Inglewood. It, either you ball or you fall almost kind of thing, you know, even if you had an education, it was it was kind of weird. If you grew up in Inglewood, y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, it's only two or three outlets for, you know, young black men in that city, you know, and, you know, thank God in 2022, there's a lot more outlets and opportunities. But in the time that I was growing up, if you didn't ball and, or you weren't a brain, you weren't, you know, it was pretty difficult to make it out. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, just picking that side of, you know, being the brain. I, luckily, I have my brain and, you know, technology. My mom put me in front of a computer. I was four years old, distracting me in a great way. So, you know, I was able to, you know, learn from that. And me being on a computer that young, that exposed me to the rest of the world without having to leave Inglewood. So, you know, seeing Bauer on TV and then also seeing what he's doing online, that really, really like, if, if, if he can do it, you know, and he's saying exactly what he wants to say, then I can say what I want to say too, and people are going to listen. And honestly, that's exactly what happened for me at 14 years old. So oh, yeah, I've been doing sure. it ever since. You know, um, two year fast forward two years, Soldier Boy came out with Crank That. Hey, history is made. That also let me know further. You can make your own music, and you can go very far. And you know, back in that day, you know, Soldier Boy sold over a million ringtones. You know, so and he did it at 16 years old. That really inspired me as a teenager and let me know that I had a different outlet other than just my brain and basketball. I can really go make music and if I focus and put the time into it and do the business right, I can actually make it like they can. Okay, so I gotta ask you this question, man. Ben, we from Inglewood, we know Inglewood. Yes, sir. It's, 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 you know, a lot of gangs in Inglewood, man. A lot of gangs run through Inglewood. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever, you know what I'm saying, you know, want a gang bang or did you ever gang bang? Absolutely not. To be honest with you, um, I had the protection of my family not just from the city of Inglewood, but I just had the protection of, of my of my family, period. Shout out to Spencer's, shout out to Joneses, shout out to Dancy's for making a collaborative effort to keep me out of that lifestyle and to also encourage me to take a more positive path. You know, no matter what struggles that they had, no matter what they were going through, they came together as a family and they felt that it was important to make sure that I did not live that lifestyle. Now, have I came across any of those situations? Of course, we live in the city of Inglewood. It doesn't matter which end that you go to from end to end. You're bound, you, you're bound to run into something. But was I actively put into the gang life? No. Was I made, was I pushed into the gang life? No. Was I protected from the gang life? Yes. So again, Spencer Joneses, Larry's, Dancy, I appreciate all you guys believing in my brain and believing that it was valuable enough not to take that lifestyle. No disrespect to the gangs, because I know y'all do y'all thing. Y'all been here way before me, but y'all got to understand it's just a little bit different when your family just pull you out that lifestyle by your shoulder, you know? So I got a, love, I got a lot of love and respect for my family for doing that because, you know, that's damn near jumping in front of a bullet when you do shit like that, you know? You, you playing with, you know, as they would call it, people's territory. That's right, so, that's right. you know, I got I got to thank my family for making sure I did not get involved in that and shaping my mind to not want to do that. Man, I commend you for that, man. You know what I'm saying? Hats off to your family for doing that. We need more families like that in the community to do yes, that, sir. to stop the kids from wanting to be gang members. You know what I'm saying? Because yes, there really ain't no future in gang banging, you know what I'm saying? But right. prison or six feet deep. You know what I'm saying? So that's the only really options you're going to have at the end of the day. You know what right. I'm saying? So I commend you, man, for doing that and not even getting involved and, in, you know what I'm saying, staying 10 toes down and keeping your mind now, focused on doing now, what you want to do. Now, I did have a situation when I was uh, 14 years old where I did have, I was walking home from school and at the time, Nextel and Boost Mobile was popular. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, everybody had chirp phones, sidekicks, you know, they were, you know, worth a lot of money. And, you know, I had a situation where I got ran up on by some teenagers from Inglewood family. And they said either give me your phone or I'm going to blast you away, you know? And, but luckily by the grace of God, you know, something happened to where they got scared and they jumped in their car and they just took off. Some of them say that they here. Most of them show that they ain't. Claiming they innocence. Let them all tell it been nothing but safe. What happened? I don't know. I didn't do nothing. I didn't yell. I didn't scream. I didn't say police. None of that. Literally, they turned around. They seen something and it scared they ass and they left. So, 
you know, thank God in that situation, thank God I didn't get robbed, thank God I didn't get hurt, you know, you know, thank my family for just putting in that mindset, don't give up, you know, don't give in, you don't have to do that. That's right. You feel me? Like, it, you are, you own your own mind. So if you own your mind and you know that, then make the decision for yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that, go do that. But I personally didn't want to do that. I love computers too much. I was, you know, I love technology. My mom put me on the computer when I was four, bro. I'm 31, you know, I'm 31 now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I just got to thank, you know, again, my family for protecting me from that situation because that gave me the mindset to say no to that. So... So do you have other brothers and sisters, or was it just you as a single? Uh, uh, single? I, actually, I'm the youngest on both sides of my parents. Uh, my mother has two children. Shout out to Desmond Parker. That's my older brother. Mm -hmm. um, and then my three sisters, uh, Aisha, Shir uh, Chiron, and Rashar. On my dad's side, shout out to Chiron Larry. Rest in peace. Um, that's our father. Uh, but I'm the youngest of five siblings total. So right. Okay. Okay. That's is, you know, including me. Right. So... So you would say that, that growing up in Inglewood was, was was pretty nice for you, man. You know what I'm saying? You was in the computers. I was and, blessed. Yeah, you was, was truly blessed. blessed, man. Man, I missed a lot of the stuff that, man, listen, a lot of the stuff that young black men got to go through in our city because of my family protecting me literally with their life, I got to miss all of that. And that is a beautiful, a beautiful blessing. Beautiful. That's probably one in a hundred. I'm one in a hundred thousand in my city, understand that, to absolutely miss, like, 90% of the bad shit. Like I said, I'm not saying it didn't happen, and I didn't see shit, but 90% of my memories of my city is great just because of what I went through in my city. So that's why I can give you all a different perspective and tell you guys how beautiful the city is and how beautiful my experience was growing up amongst all the, the, the stuff that y'all hear and see on TV, man. It's, it's still a beautiful place, you know? Still it beautiful is, things is. there. It's still beautiful people. Like, we're the city of champions. We have that name for a reason. You know, it may not be sh shown, you know, all the time, but we got that name for a reason. And my intention is to show y'all every day that we are the city of champions and I'm a champion and you could be one too, no matter where you're from. That's right. That's right, man. So so right now, today, you know, you uh, are you, would you consider yourself a, a, a rap artist or, you know, you're an engineer? What do you label yourself as? Honestly, man, I, I label myself as a celebrity music producer okay. because um, I'm known, you know, I'm known across the world. Um, am I very favorite in Inglewood? Probably not because uh, I don't collaborate with everybody. Uh, but still shout out to everybody moving, moving and pushing the line in Inglewood. D Smoke, ING Rucci, you know, several others, you know, shout out to 211 back in the day for paving the way for us as well. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to be brazy. All of that, you know. Um, but I consider myself a celebrity music producer because I don't just rap. I don't just engineer. I don't just make beats. You know, I, I go behind the scenes. You know, I, I show these artists the difference between the 10% of their talent and the 90% of their business. So that's why I consider myself a celebrity music producer because I go behind the scenes and we go and we really calculate what needs to happen to make your record go. If we don't do that, we can be in the studio all day and spend twelve thousand dollars, and it's not going to be nothing. We just going to listen to it in our laptop. And my goal is not for that to happen for you. If you really want this to be your business, we got to focus on the ninety percent. So that's why I consider myself a celebrity music producer. Shout out for Bur to Bernadette Cooper and Luana Lungs of Climax for giving me my first major opportunity, my first major credit as a music producer, engineer, and uh, and everything. And also shout out uh, Jerry the Gov Brown. John Legend's engineer for mixing over a production that me and Bernie that Cooper and Lorena Lunds did last year. It's called Feathers. We actually charted number 36 on the UK Amazon charts for R&B. So I just got to shout them out and, you know, thank them for that opportunity. And, you know, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, but that right there is just how I helped get my name, my, my celebrity name, my celebrity music producer tag. So if anybody asks me what I do, that's what I do. Okay. I'm also a mogul, but I don't use that word yet. Right, right, that's right. So, what other other artists have you worked with though? That's that's you know that's out there. What other artists have you really worked with that's out there? Um, you know if you mean? want to talk, if you want to talk major, uh, I've done recordings for Cap One of True Religion uh, University, which is Two Chains label. Um, I've done tracking for Volume Ten, Pistol Grip Pump. We did one of his new records during the pandemic. Um, Don Terrio Honda and the Wild and Out. Um, I also worked with Quay Global, the producer, uh, who else? Fresh Jones, Bankroll Fresh's uh, producer, rest in peace. 
uh, man, the, the, the list goes on. My major credit list goes on, but if you want to really talk about the real work I put in, shout out to Havoc to God, shout out to Mr. M.O.B., shout out to Young Keeper of Potency Music. Um, these are some major names that's coming up in the game right now, performing every day, coming out of the L.A. area. One came from Bedford, Ohio. Um, and these are, you know, some independents I work with. Shout out to Mr. M.O.B. from Compton, especially because our record was the first record to do a million streams on our own through our own budget and he owns the record nobody else no major label so that's our major accomplishment and we are really gonna go hard with that so that's a major artist right there y'all go look him up right now mr mob that's millions on billions records y'all make sure y'all go check that out y'all go download that y'all go download anything y'all see that we do man we we do it major just like everyone else you know so that's right, man. So, so today, right now, man, we got so many artists going out. I mean, they they out there, man. A lot of different type of music. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's coming from all kind of you know standpoints. Mm -hmm. Um, right now, today, who would you say would be your favorite artist that you like what they doing, the music that they doing, the way they running their whole camp, they running their program? Who who would be that one? I'm gonna say, little baby. Little baby. Okay. Um, and I'm not just talking about the music mm -hmm. because um, if we're talking about Little Baby's music, not saying it's mediocre, no disrespect to anybody major, but what I love about Baby's music is he knows how he wants to sound and he does not let anyone change it. That's what I love about the music part. Now his business is immaculate. 4PF is his label. He's doing major deals around the world. His marketing is in sync with every record that he drops. He's not throwing out a record and taking a chance on it. He's actually marketing it. You guys just seen the thing he did for, uh, did you guys see the Call of Duty commercial? I know he might not be in the video games and stuff like that, but he just did a deal with Modern Warfare 3 where mm. he's doing the army chant, but he did it his way. Okay. Kind of rapping it. Okay. And if you look at the production of the commercial, you can tell they spent at least a half a million on it. Mm. So just the fact that he was able to keep his own identity. Right. Right. As an artist and as little baby, mm -hmm. while he did that commercial, that's what made him the best and the biggest to me right now. Right. Because it's very hard to do these deals with these corporations and keep your identity because they're paying you to lose your identity mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. So if you can go in there, you can negotiate the deal and say, I'm a little baby and you're going to treat me like a little baby. I'm not changing nothing. And we gonna, you're going to do what I tell you to do because we know we're going to make this thing sell for you. That's respect. That's the real business. Mm -hmm. So that's what brings that 10% with that 90%. And that's what brings that whole 100. And that's what brings the whole respect for his game right. to it. Because, you know, not only did he negotiate that deal, he owns all his music. Mm -hmm. He owns 4 PF. Mm -hmm. He makes his own rules and he sets his own price and he sticks to it. Nobody can fold him. So that's what I'm inspired by right now as far as a total movement. Okay, okay. So is he is little baby independent? Is yes, he, independent? he is. He's independent. Four what you PF. think about independent? You think that that's the best way to go? Hell yeah! Okay. Independent is the best way to go. When you copyright a song, you own it for seventy years. Hmm. So if you make a song today and you pass it down to your to your you know your wife, your child, your grandchild, you can pass it down to your nephew, your cousin, anybody. They got sixty five years of owning that product. Right. If it can, if it take you a thousand dollars to make that product, right, and it's a dollar to sell it. And you got 70 years to make a thousand dollars back, you gotta look at the big picture. You feel me? It's a lot of intellectual property you don't own for that long. Mm -hmm. So that's why labels are so gung ho on owning your product. Even right. if you do a three to five year deal, once they copyright your song, they own it for 70 years. Mm -hmm. So that's why the artist gotta go back and buy their masters and stuff like that. Okay. Because even though that their label deal is done, they copyrighted it. So from the date that whoever record label copyrighted that mm -hmm. is owned by them for 70 years until somebody else buys it. Wow. Period. Wow. That's why owning your own music is very, very crucial and important because it is your bargaining chip. If RCA own your music, RCA tell you what to do. If GQP own music, GQP tell GQP what to do. You get what I'm saying? I don't answer to nobody. Real Inglewood Moments answer to Real Inglewood Moments. Right. Not RCA, not right. Sony, not Def Jam. Right. They answer to Real Inglewood Moments. So the decision is yours. Mm -hmm. 
That's why independence is the best way to go. It yes, doesn't matter how much money that you're making, you own the product. It just takes one thing to crack. Mm -hmm. Once it crack one time, that's it. That's it. You're on the roll. That's it. Period. That's D Smoke that. is a prime example. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. From Inglewood. Yeah, yeah. He's a prime example. Nobody liked his style of music at first. Right. Because he was too real. Mm -hmm. And he's put a little Spanish in his music. Right. People weren't ready for that. Right. Let's just be real. Right. When he programmed us with it. Look at the D Smoke following that we have now. They mm -hmm. respect him. They respect what he does. Right. They found out what he did for the community. Right, right. And he still owns his own stuff. That's what's up. Even though he has to deal with Empire, he owns his masters. Right, still owns his masters, right. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You gotta you gotta look at it that way. Like right. for 70 years, D Smoke owns his stuff and he can help the city of Inglewood. That's who he represent. Mm -hmm. When he when we invest in these independent artists, like say you buy my record today on Apple Music or on iTunes, like let's say you actually buy it, you're supporting Inglewood. Right. The same way that you maybe stream your favorite artist, Mac 10, Dub C, and, and all of that, and purchase their music. When you purchase GQP record, it's, you're doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but the dollar go to GQP, which makes you a what? A primary investor. It's not going to RCA, it's not going to right. whoever own West Side Connection. You get what I'm saying? So that's why it's important for, you know, OGs like yourselves in the community to help support us. You know, even if you guys don't like all of our music, we need y'all support in order to make it. You right. get what I'm saying? And, sure. and once you support us and actually listen to what we're saying, some of us, some of us are, uh, are spit knowledge and some of us have a cry for help. It's up for you to understand the message. That's real. You got to listen to it. You got to listen. Right. And, uh, and I can tell you right now, a lot of OGs, no disrespect to none of the OGs. But a lot of the OGs, double, triple, and quadruple, y'all don't listen to these young folks. That's why they out here wilding. Y'all don't purchase the record. Y'all don't give them a chance. It's always an excuse. I don't know how to download this. I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Learn. Just like how you learned how to go buy that chain. Just how you learned how to go dip, get that stuff off Amazon. It's the same thing. Their record costs 99 cents. If you know you got somebody in your family that's not trying to gangbang, that's not trying to live a bad life, that's not trying to rob people during this inflation, and you know they got a record for sale, go purchase that record and stop playing with them people's career. Period. They own a business just like you. It's a business, so respect it as such. It's 99 cents. No, it's no more excuses. Hashtag no more excuses. Purchase the record. That's what's up, baby. That's real talk, man. It only costs 99 cents. I know y'all got a mini 99 cents. So For real. And it costs 99 cents in 10 minutes of time. That's it. That's and guess it. what? A lot of these young people, they're really looking at who purchased their record. So when they see an OG in a neighborhood who they felt didn't, you know, maybe wasn't looking at them or understood them. And then they see that OG name. Oh, OG bought my record. Damn, OG really believe in me. Let me really stay out the street. Mm -hmm. And let me continue to do this. Let me go talk to OG and see how I can get OG more involved in what I'm doing. No, I don't need the money. Mm -hmm. I just need you to back me. I need your support. support. I need your hand on my shoulder to say, look, young blood, I understand. You know, you, you, you see what I do, but you're doing something positive here. So I need you to turn this way mm -hmm. while I go that way. Right. I'm going to be in the middle for you, so you don't got to go that way. Right. Tell me what you need from me so you ain't got to go this way, so I can turn you this way. That's what I need you for, OG. I don't need your paper. I need your guidance. It's a total different story. That's why I said this independent music, these independent artists from wherever you're from, listen to what they're saying in their song. It's either a cry for help or it is a true message that they need you to understand that you're missing. Take a minute, literally. That's what's up right there, man. You yes, know what sir. I'm saying? Everybody needs support in what they're doing. So, That's you know it. what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing, you need support in. Like me, I need support. Real Inglewood moments. I love the support. You know what I'm saying? When I get it, you got to give it. Right. You got to give man, back. Man, you was just you know that taste of soul yesterday. Yeah. Came yeah. right back out here. Yeah, you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that support. This man drove three, 400 miles to come give me an interview. Like, that's that's support from the OGs. You right. know what I'm saying? There's there's not a lot of OGs doing that, spending their they time and their investment and they it just just their investment and their time, man. Like so for you to come, you know, 200, 300, 400 miles just to do an interview on me just be out of the love and respect for Inglewood, that's support. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like it's it's not a direct dollar in my pocket, no, but you're investing in me. That's real. You invested in me, bro. That's you real. you came out here for me. Right. 
You know, you could have been at home. You, we could have did this over the phone. Right, right. Whatever. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. know, but you as an, you know, you as a real Inglewood moment, as real Inglewood moments, decided to come out here and say, you know what, Larry, we see what you're doing in the streets. We really appreciate what you're doing for the city of Inglewood. So we're going to push after doing this event to come interview you. What? It's that simple. That's true support. So recognize this moment here, America, world. This is how... OGs support their youngest. Youngest, pay attention to this. No dollar amount was exchanged, but this man drove 400 miles to make sure that we had this interview and to support the city of Inglewood the best way he know possible. So, peep that. Okay, that's what's up right there, man. Give me something for the little kids, man. The little kids, you know, everybody got a dream. Little kids be having dreams, man. What would you tell them about as far as music? You know what I'm saying? They dreams of, of being wanting to be a rapper or a singer or you know what I'm saying? I tell all I'm gonna tell all the youth as I tell the adults that's trying to do this thing. First things first, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. If you know that it's gonna happen because you gonna make it happen, that's the beginning and the end of the story. Whatever is in between negative, don't worry about it. Go do you, because it's too easy to own your own music nowadays. For prime example, uh, shout out to the Giles family in San, San Bernardino. Uh, shout out to Deja Too Goofy, a uh, 15-year-old female rapper I'm working with. Mother purchased the production from me. Mm -hmm. She owns the production. Her and her daughter own the beat. Mm -hmm. They wrote a song. They own the song. She went to her mom and said, I want to do music. Mom knows me. Hey, look, my daughter wants to do music. What can we do? How can we make this affordable for her? making her dream come true? Ooh, wow. That's what it takes. You feel me? Some people out here believe, some people don't. Deja's a little lucky. Her mom believes in her and, you know, believes in the situation and she kind of sees what's going on. But the point of me telling the youth this story is Deja didn't give up. Her mom didn't believe in her right away. It took her three years. She'd been begging her mom since she was 12. 13, 14, 15 years old to get in the studio. And then finally she jumped on it and she believed it. And if nobody believes in you, you go out there and you make it happen yourself. You know that you know that you the only way for you to get bread right now is to get good grades. Go get them A's and get twenty, forty dollars an A from your from your family. Like, look, I'm doing good in school. Wow, I need this to pursue my career. Go do that. Learn how to do business early. That's a, a, a business move. Do your chores. Listen to your parents, you know. And I'm not saying do it for monetary gain, but this will help you build the trust with your family in order to do the things that you want to do. So the number one thing is don't give up believing yourself. You know, number two, invest in yourself. Number three, stay on the straight and narrow. Don't get distracted because the moment you get distracted in the music industry, when you stop, you literally have to start all over, like literally. Like I've been doing this 15 years straight. If I stop today... I have to rebuild my 15 years. You don't want to do that. So, so to the kids, definitely, if you feel like music is your career, do it and don't let no one tell you different. I don't care who it is, period. Because, for example, my family didn't believe in everything that I was doing as far as the music at first, but after 15 years of hard work, they kind of see what's going on now. So just be ready if you really want to do that. You can do it, and you can own it. That's what's up, man. That's what I'm talking about, man. So y'all kids, pay attention. Y'all listen, man. You can you own it today. Saying? You and yeah. your parents can own your own music today. You don't need a record label. You don't need none of that stuff. All you need is somebody who truly cares about your career. It starts with y'all, too. Care about the career, and then the rest of the energy will follow. Guaranteed. So, man, link them up, man. Let them know where they can, you know, holler at you. You know what I'm saying? Let them know what you know. They can holler at you, and you can push them in that right direction and get oh, them yeah. going. And You my, know what uh, I'm saying? My Instagram is always open. My Instagram, personal Instagram, is Larry Lavelle. That's L-A-R-R-Y, L-A-V-E-L-L. -L. Um, you can email me, uh, corporate, C-O-R-P-O-R-A-T-E, at teamgqp.com. That's at T-E-A-M, the letter G, the letter Q, the letter P.com. Any other social medias, you can reach out to me. You can find me at Studio 1920. You can get in touch with me through one of my sponsors. Shout out Darby and Rogers. Uh, that's the shirt that I'm wearing right now, Luxury Streetwear brand. 
Uh, shout out to Grind Flip, uh, Lux uh, Streetwear brand. You can reach out to them to get in contact with me too. I do sponsorships through my, uh, I do uh, mentorships through my sponsors. That's what mm -hmm. I meant to okay, say. So if you are looking for a mentorship, if you're looking, you know, just to have some conversation, you need some encouragement, mental health check. I'm very big on this. Um, you can reach out to any of my sponsors. That's Grind Flip. That's Darby and Rogers. That's going to be Studio 1920. That's going to be uh, Parlay P Sports. That's going to be Potency Music Entertainment. If you reach out to any of my sponsors and say, hey, I need a mentorship. I really want to do this music. Um, I saw your podcast on Real Inglewood Moments. Um, just reach out to me and they'll reach back out to me and we'll arrange something. Um, definitely reach out to me on all social medias if you can. I also have an engineering class for students um, after school, uh, three to seven. Um, Yes, it does cost a little bit, but uh, what's included in the cost is a laptop with all the programs that you need, plus the knowledge I'm going to give you in order to be a music producer or audio engineer. Also, out of my 30 students that I have at the end of each class, I pick three students and they come work for me, literally. Hmm. So I pay them. I give them a job, oh, that's basically. That's so you can be from 14 to 16. All I need is the approval of your parent. If your parent signs off, I give you a job making $10 an hour doing what you love. That's what it's up. So, that's what it's um, up. So those are some ways that you can reach me again. Um, my name is Larry Lavelle. Any social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, just reach out. But I definitely encourage the youth and uh, anyone else who is seeking a mentorship, please reach out to Grindflip. Please reach out to Darby and Rogers. Please reach out to Parlay Peace Sports. Please reach out to Potency Music Entertainment. Or please reach out to Studio 1920 to get that arranged. And, you know, definitely after this interview, give Ing Real Inglewood Moments a call. I'm pretty sure we can get you guys connected, you know. No I'm definitely here for the youth. I'm here to build greater business in our community, not just the city of Inglewood, even though that's where I started. That's what this is about. That's where it's coming from. But I'm here about building greater business for all, period. It just starts at the city of champions. We wear that label proudly. And I'm going to use that label proudly because I am a champion. You are too. That's what's up, man. I appreciate you, man. You know what I'm saying? Doing this interview with Rio Inglewood Mamas, man. Yes, sir. You we know, appreciate and, uh, you. Of course, we're going to come back and talk to you again mm -hmm. in the future. Thank for you. sure. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I hope these people, they really listening. You know what I'm saying? They can make a change in their life. You don't got to be out here game banging and doing all that, man. You know what I'm saying? Change your life, man. Live for your future, man. You know what I'm saying? Think about your future. You want to do music? Holler at my boy Larry LaVell, man. He can turn you on and put you in a class and, you know, get you going, man. Yep. Especially and even if you can't do the class, I'll, the game is free. I'm already winning. I live by that every day. There it is. Y'all so I'm going to say it to you one more time. This is from Larry LaVell. The game is free. I'm already winning. <laughs> Love, 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 love